Hello friends, welcome to the Biological Life Sciences channel. Today we are going to discuss Agrobacterium species based plant vector. That is, the Agrobacterium genus is having two pathogenic uh, bacteriums, that is, Agrobacterium tumefaciens that causes crown gall disease and Agrobacterium rhizogenes that is, hairy root disease. We are going to see both these vectors and how uh, both these bacteria and how they are used as a plant vector. So, these are the unusual agents that is brought into use as plant genetic engineers that are naturally occurring. So let's see about this. It was first time discovered by Smith and Townsend in 1907. It's a soil borne gram negative bacterium. It's rod shaped and motile and belongs to the family Rhizobiaceae. It's a phytopathogen and is regarded as nature's most effective plant engineer. That is in nature uh, the uh, the transfer of gene occurs in the uh, occurs by these two bacteria directly into the plant and it is quite successful uh, agrobacterium tumefaciens generally transforms a plant cell and creates a biosynthetic machinery to produce nutrient for its own and its use several dicotyledonous plants are infected by this bacterium using crown gall disease but monocots are difficult to transform by agrobacterium tumefaciens So let's see about these species. There are about two pathogenic species of Agrobacterium genus. First is Agrobacterium tumefaciens that is updated scientifically now and it is called as Rhizobium radiobacters. It induces the crown gall disease that is formation of tumors. Agrobacterium rhizogens that is Rhizobium rhizogens. It is updated scientific name and it induces hairy root disease in the plant. So let's see the classification. Both the bacteria belongs to the uh, kingdom bacteria, phylum prote uh, proteobacteria, class uh, alpha proteobacteria, rhizobiales order and family rhizobiaceae, uh, genesis rhizobium for both of them, species is radiobacter for agrobacterium tumefaciens and species for agrobacterium rhizogens is rhizogens. How it is infected? First of all the plant uh, that is a wounded part of plant is infected by this organism. Uh, there is a chemical called phenolic compound called as acetosiregon and hydroxyacetosiregon. These are the two chemicals which plant produces when it is wounded. So uh, these chemicals uh, attracts this bacteria uh, for the infection. So crown gall occurs when the bacterium releases its TI plasmid that is tumor inducing plasmid into the plant cell. It is RI that is root inducing plasmid for uh, agrobacterium rhizogens. The tDNA present in both plasmids is transferred to the host cell via wounded section. The tDNA carries the gene that codes for protein involved in biosynthesis of growth hormones such as auxins and cytokinins and novel uh, plant metabolites uh, such as opines and agropines and octopines are also there. These are the specific amino acids that are required for plant for its growth. The growth hormone causes the plant cell to proliferate means uh, after the transferring of tDNA into the plant uh, it forces the plant to produce all these kinds of hormones thereby inducing the growth uh, in case of TI plasmid it is auxin and cytokinin production and in case of root inducing plasmid it is uh, auxin production. Let's see the mode of infection of this bacteria. Uh, first of all the wounded plant is there. This wounded plant produces acetosiregon. This is the chemical structure of acetosiregon. Then this acetosiregon uh, activates virulence gene. Uh, this virulence gene is uh, synthesized into uh, VIR protein. Now this VIR protein, it takes away the uh, tDNA from the bacteria into plant and this tDNA is integrated into the plant. The tDNA complex imports to the nucleus and integrates into the plant cell. Then after that, this tDNA is responsible for synthesis of opines. Uh, it is also responsible for first step in cytokinin synthesis and auxin synthesis. You can see here, both auxins and cytokinins are synthesized by uh, this tDNA. The opines are also uh, metabolized, that is produced by plant and it helps bacteria to grow. It acts as a nutrient for bacteria. And this is how the tDNA is integrated into the plant. Let's see in details about TI plasmid. There are two strains of TI plasmid. Uh, 
octopine st uh, strain and nopaline strain these two types of ti plasmids are present it contains uh, two tdna region tl and tr t left and t right t left is 14 kb tr is 7 kb whereas in nopaline it's one region that is of 20 kb the size of this ti plasmid is about 200 kb and has a central role in crown gall formation it contains one or more T region that is integrated into the genome of host plant. The virulent region here is approximately about 40 KBs, at least having 8 to 11 uh, virulence gene that is VIR gene. It has an origin of replication also and contains a region enabling conjugative transfer and has gene for cat catabolism of opines. This is the diagram of TI plasmid. You can see here there are the genes in the tDNA that is T region uh, where uh, oxygen production gene is there, oncogene is there that is actually responsible for production of tumor, then cytokinin production is there, opine synthesis is there, then uh, here there is a presence of right tDNA border and here left tDNA border. This tDNA border marks the ends of tDNA which is actually going to be transformed in plant cells. There is a conjugative transfer gene also that helps in transferring this tDNA into the plant and uh, there is a gene for opine metabolism. So in case of octopine it will be opine metabolism, in case of uh, nopaline it will be nopaline metabolism and there is a virulence region that helps bacteria to uh, integrate or infect the plant and there is also obviously origin of replication that helps in replicating. Uh, let's see RI plasmid. Uh, the structure is a bit similar for RI plasmid here also. It is also having left and right tDNA border which marks the ends of tDNA that is transferred. There is a genes for cytokinin production, uh, oncogene also is present, oxygen is present and opine synthesis gene is also present. There is a viral virulence gene and presence of origin of replication. The tDNA is absolutely similar in both plasmids. Let's see in details the tDNA. Uh, this is the part of tDNA that is having uh, the left and right border and this is transferred into the plant. It is having genes for auxins, cytokinins and opines. These are also referred as oncogenes. The two borders left and right both of both are having approximately 20 kb each and it is uh, the tDNA has a region called virulence region that is most important for the transfer of tDNA for opine catabolism. We can see here in this the, the, this is the arrangement of genes uh, inside the tDNA. Uh, there is cytokinin synthesis gene that is responsible for, for tumor with roots, oxygen synthesis gene that is responsible for tumors in shoots, so TMS2, TMS1, TMR that is for roots and then there are few genes that function is still unknown but this, uh, but this is the actual structure of uh, the tDNA that is transferred into the plant. Uh, so let, let's see how this is used in genetic engineering. First methodology of using these plasmids as a genetic engineering vector is production of disarmed TI plasmid. What is done in this? The portion of tDNA between the T left border and T right border is removed and it is added with plant selectable marker gene which is helping us in selecting the recombinant or transformed uh, cells inside the plant. Then there is a promoter gene, then there is a gene of interest that we want to add into the plant and there is a terminator region. We know that this plasmid when put in agrobacterium will definitely transfer this tDNA into the plant as it is having both the borders intact. Okay. And now there is a bacterial selectable marker gene also that is required in bacteria plus there is virulence gene also that helps bacteria to infect the plant which in turn transfers this tDNA but here in this case the tDNA is not virulent one and it helps in transferring our gene of interest plus it is also having the origin of replication. There is another method methodology in which binary plasmid vectors is used where agrobacterium tumefaciens is used as a tool for genetic engineering. So here what is done the virulence gene and tDNA is put on separate plasmids. Uh, the virulence gene is present in TI plasmid with, with its origin of replication in agrobacterium plus another vector is used. Uh, which is having the uh, in which the tDNA from TI plasmid is cut off and is ligated into the binary vector. Now this is having the origin of replication for agrobacterium and E. coli and it is also having the selectable markers plus 
it is also having uh, the gene of interest that we want to clone and the selectable markers for plant now what will happen both of these plasmids are introduced into the agrobacterium and then agrobacterium is allowed to infect now it will naturally transfer this tdna this virulence gene present in this ti plasmid will help in bac help bacteria in uh, actual infection of the bacteria to the plant and here this binary vector will help in transferring our tdna as its property into the plant so thereby uh, successfully uh, making a genetic ex experiment See, this diagram shows you how the gene is successfully transferred this tdna is cut off and our uh, fragment of interest or gene of interest is inserted into this plasmid and this is again recombined using dna ligase enzyme and it is introduced into the plant cell using the bacteria and it is regenerated and uh, we can get the plant with new traits there are different advantages for that it's simple and comparatively less less expensive uh, as we compare it to the other genetic experiments the uh, transformation efficiency is very high in this case uh, transgenic crops obtained by this method is having better fertility percentage uh, it is having protocol for both dicots and monocots but it is slightly difficult to infect monocotyledonous plant as it does not secrete phenolic uh, compounds such as acetosilicon and hydroxyacetosilicon upon infection so slightly there is a difficulty in uh, transforming the monocot plants uh, the relatively large length of dna fragments can be transferred into this um, plasmids therefore it is advantageous there are a few disadvantages also as we know monocots don't produce acetosilicon in response to wounding so infection is difficult here uh, we can put any uh, dna between lb and l right that is the uh, left border and right border and it will be transferred to the plant but uh, that uh, amount of transfer that we can do in tdna is a bit smaller so engineering with agrobacterium there are two problems it is having a very large size and difficult to manipulate and it couldn't generate plant from tumor whatever the tumor that this plant is causing we cannot generate the whole plant using this one i hope you like the video thank you for watching please press like button share comment and subscribe